So today we're going to be talking about recycled art, or some people refer to it as junk art. Really what recycled art is, is a creative work that's been made from discarded materials that once had another purpose. So gum wrappers, or here in this dog you may see toys. It can be large, or it can be small. It can be two or three dimensional, so it can be flat, or it can be three dimensional. There's really no limit. Uh, the only limit is your imagination as to what you can make from these found objects or recycled objects. So if we look up above here on the top right, those are actually beads. They're just kind of blown up and they're made from magazine scraps. So we did a whole uh, kids art on trade beads and then we made trade beads from old magazines. Here in the center we have this wonderful installation art elephant. It looks like probably on a playground made from old recycled tubes. And then we also have a fish which probably was made from an aluminum can. Recycled art is nothing new. Recycled art has actually been around a long time. It's just gained in popularity as um, trying to show an environmental awareness and using materials that are already out there rather than generating something maybe new from scratch. So here up above we have a quilt and people used to make the quilts out of old clothing that maybe fell apart. They would even take patches from other quilts and put them on the new, the new quilts if it got a hole or something like that. Down below we see a quilt made out of denim so it's probably a bunch of pants and then someone made a quilt out of that. What's really neat is here to the right these beautiful canisters. Those are actually um, artillery shells from World War I and what would happen is the, the soldiers would be in the trenches for days upon days and they got really bored so they started taking these artillery shells and they would carve just these intricate beautiful pieces in the artillery shells and today they're actually collector's items. So recycled art has been around a while we just didn't really recognize it for what it was. It started really blossoming and becoming its own specific art form in the early 20th century or the 1900s. Pablo Picasso, which a lot of us are familiar with, created something that we think of as probably part of our everyday life today. He invented something called the collage and he would take together a uh, pasted pizza bits of paper from pictures or newspapers or different different even different pieces of artwork and he would combine them together to make a new picture, a collage. Dada, he challenged the traditional expectations of art. He would use things that were like seemingly use useless like old gum wrappers or old bottles or strings to create really new and fresh pieces of artwork. Marcel Duchamp, he really pressed the envelope the furthest. Um, I think a lot of us would consider him the probably the father of recycled art. He used found objects to create art and found objects are really any object that you find and then you make change that purpose into something else to create art. So he used bicycle tires, he used wooden furniture and he even used, believe it or not, a urinal in one of his recycled art pieces. And we're gonna look at that in just a second. One of the biggest contributions he made was his whole idea of what art was. He really started changing people's thinking of what art is. Art is really what the artist says it is. Before that, it was what critics would say it is or what the masters would say it is. And he said, no, if the artist says it's art, it's art. And that really started changing people's perception of what makes art. So here we see Duchamp's latrine or urinal and yep, all he did was sign it and put it in a museum and he said, it's art. And then in the middle we see another piece of a 3D sculpture of found art and this is by Kurt Schwitters. And on the left we see a Pablo Picasso collage. So now we have recycled art or junk art. Recycled art or junk art really came into being something a little bit more. The pieces were bigger in the late 20th and 21st centuries. We have Robert Rauschenberg and he created these large artworks which gained the term assemblages because they incorporated large found objects like tires, street signs, taxidermy animals and then what he would do is juxtapose them with painted surfaces and bold slashes of color. So we see like up here on the right we have the yellow and the red or we have the ram and then he was on top of this uh, canvas painting. 
Rauschenberg called his works combines to describe the combination of objects and the materials in unexpected ways. So into the 1970s and 80s is when he really became popular and, and really blossomed. American sculptor John Chamberlain used twisted automobile parts to make towering sculptures. He called the materials he worked with junk, so we see some on the right, and that's kind of where we got that idea of junk art. But really, he would transform them into these bold, beautiful pieces of artwork. Now we have one of my favorites, installation art, or eco-artists, which has become more and more popular as time passed. In the 1980s, galleries and museums started opening this up, this their, themselves up to this newer art form, and it's really grown and blossomed in popularity. Installation art is a three-dimensional work using common, raw, or natural materials. So we saw earlier with that large elephant on the playground, that would be a kind of installation art. Sorry. Um, it's usually interactive, but it doesn't always have to be interactive. And sometimes what they're trying to do is make a statement behind it. So when we see this picture, this is actually an installation art, and it has just this wonderful blue, kind of strangely tranquil feeling to it, even though it's a bunch of plastic and it's floating in space, it has this strange kind of calming feeling to it. This is actually an installation art piece called Plastic Ocean. So they made a whole ocean yep, out of that. These, this is another far away and up close shot of a piece of installation artwork. This is so much fun. This is by a Japanese artist called Hiroshi Fugi and it is made completely of recycled children's toys. So he made a large Tyrannosaurus Rex, yes, completely out of children's toys. You see Legos in there, you see all kinds of things. You see like little bowls and balls and it's just super creative. Again, recycled art, your imagination is really the only limits you have. So today we're going to actually make a really easy um, piece of recycled art. A lot of us have old CDs, um, old DVDs that maybe are all scratched up. So we're going to create those into some really pretty uh, wind spinners that you can hang out in your garden. They'll collect, uh, they'll reflect the sunlight, kind of make a really pretty rainbow effect out there. So what you're going to need is you're going to need to make it the prettiest you can, you're going to need two of your recycled or old DVDs. Kids, make sure that you ask mom's permission on which ones you get. We're going to need some glue guns and then whatever kind of found objects you see around the house, you're going to want to attach to it. You can use paint or you can use objects. So go on a hunt around your house and I'll meet you back here in just a minute and we will make our wind spinners together. All right, so I have everything laid out for you, just some things that I found from around the house. We've got some beads, some yarn, uh, some fishing wire to hang it with, all kinds of just cool odds and ends, uh, pirate tokens, you see large buttons, game pieces. I literally have a game piece here, so now you actually have something to do with all these things. Um, regular mismatch buttons and gems. We also have a glue gun. I like to use the medium heat glue guns. I don't like the high heat. They're a little too scary for me. Medium heat is nice. Um, if it touches you, it's gonna, it's gonna burn, but it's not gonna leave a welt or anything. So it's safer. Um, the low heat are really nice. They don't burn. Um, my biggest thing is that you have to work so fast with it, especially with kids. It can be kind of hard. So I'm going to start by gluing two of my DVDs together. Okay, and you really want to like get a lot, a lot of glue on this part. Okay, and I put so that the shiny sides are out. Okay, press that down. All right, and you saw that it took almost a whole glue stick to do that. So now I am going to start with my design. And I decided to do all glue down things. Um, you can paint too. You could actually, you could use Sharpies on this. It's really whatever you want to do. So just be really careful when you're doing this that you don't burn your little fingers. 
this is your first time working with a glue gun, you may want to work with a parent and have them do the gluing part. So we've got side one done. And if you only want to do side one and you don't want to do side two, that's fine. I am just going to do something a little bit different on side two. Just make sure you don't cover that hole. some I'd love to see them down posted in the comments below